Hi everyone, it's Norm here. Thanks for joining me on today's episode. Today we're going to be heading into the wetlands in the Tall Grass Prairie Natural Area, learning about North America's smallest member of the heron family, the least bittern. So stay tuned to learn about this elusive bird. The least bittern is only 80 grams and they have a wingspan of approximately 45 centimeters. So like I said earlier, they are a small bird. When it comes to coloring, they are mostly brown and have uh, light striping on their throat throughout their long neck. The males are a bit more distinct as they have a black glossy crown that runs through the back. Now like most herons, they have that long pointed beak which is yellowish orange in colors and they have again long legs that are yellow and orange in color. So you can mistake this bird on appearance from some other herons but due to the size it's fairly unmistakable. Throughout May to September, least bittern are found in southern portions of Manitoba, Ontario, Quebec, and occasionally in New Brunswick. Now in this Canadian range, uh, this is where they're going to be nesting and breeding. So the habitat that they're looking for to do just that is similar to this area that I'm standing in right now. These uh, wetlands, marshy, swampy areas which two things are really important to have. Number one, they really like these small open bodies of water. And number two, dense vegetation. So that's usually in the form of reeds or as you can see behind me, cattails. So they use these cattails for a few things. The adult has sort of uh, evolved this defense mechanism where if they sense a predator, They'll put their beak straight up in the air and they'll wave back and forth, sort of mimicking the reeds as they wave back and forth in the reeds. So I've actually seen this with their older cousin, the American bittern, and to tell you the truth, it's a little bit comical to witness. Now, they also rely on these cattails as camouflage for the nest. So the adults will build the nest uh, on a raised platform, but in that dense vegetation. And they'll be laying on average two to six eggs. Now when those eggs hatch, the parents work really tirelessly to feed those chicks. So they're looking for small minnows, uh, frogs, tadpoles, insects, really anything that they can get their uh, bills onto. Now once those chicks are able to start flying, the parents will start thinking about flying south. So the least bittern spends its winters throughout the Gulf Coast in the United States, in the Caribbean, and throughout different portions of South America. The least bittern is an extremely shy and elusive bird. And if we pair that with its small size, well, that creates a bit of a hard species to study. We do know that the population is small and declining. It's estimated that in North America, we have about 80,000 breeding pairs. Only about 1,500 of those pairs can be found in Canada. So, the loss of wetland habitat coincides with that decreased population and there are also a handful of other issues that the least bittern faces. One thing that's key is to bridge the sort of knowledge gap that we have. If we better understand the why, what, where sort of questions, then we'll be better equipped to aiding the least bittern. Now, these studies are well underway here in Canada and with any hope 
the least bittern populations will begin to stabilize. So that's everything I have for you today. Thank you everyone for watching and we'll see you next time.